When we had last left, Harrier Dubois, he and Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi had traveled westward along the waterlock now that it was operable. There did they find a sheet of ice with a hole punched right through, punched through by none other than a crashed motor carriage. Upon in waiting for the tide to go out, did they investigate further into this crashed motor carriage, and it was soon revealed that it belonged to none other than Harry himself. Indeed, it was his precinct's motor carriage that he had driven to Martinez with, and had subsequently crashed during his drunken, drug-filled stupor not too long ago. But within did they discover a set of clothing and his police badge, which revealed a few interesting details about Harry, including his full name. With that information in hand, perhaps it was now time to return to Joyce. This is Disco Elysium. Welcome back. Let's head on over there, huh? Yeah, I think that's a great plan. Right? Since we have the badge, we should be able to get that, uh, the company secrets and all that shit, right? Let's go up and over here. There we go. Speed along this way. Good, good, good. Alright. There we are. You know what? In between videos, I was also thinking about, um the whole Everard situation, right? Like, which which of the Clare brothers do we think we were speaking to right there? I don't know. Hmm. I wonder if we'll talk to them again, talk to Everard, and they'll seem to have different information about us or something? Or they'll react slightly differently? I don't know. Maybe there'll be some way, like, thanks to some skill, we'll be able to tell which one is which. I don't know. Hmm. Because I'm assuming one will be there during daytime and another will be there during the nighttime. Right? I'd assume. Okay. Let's see. Joyce, what's up? Guess what I got? My fucking You're badge. Back. Good. What can I help you with? Oh, yeah. We've got all this stuff we can speak about. All right. Show her your badge. I found my badge, by the way. By love you did. She inspects the piece of blue plastic, her eyes scanning from left to right. She hands it back to you. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant Double Yefriter Dubois. I am glad to see a man of high qualification. This The situation is precarious. Seaweed drips from the badge in your hand. It smells of fish. What can I help you with, Lieutenant Yefriter? How about you share your information on the lynching, now that you've seen his badge? The goalposts have moved, Lieutenant. In absence of the badge, I have informed my employer there will be a probe. I cannot rescind that promise. She smiles apologetically. To my knowledge, the drivers are still at the roundabout. I will tell you everything I know. When you finished with them. This was your plan all along. Fair, I guess. The probe will be done soon. Man. We got fucking played, huh? Fuck, the lieutenant was right about this. We should have not agreed to anything. Ooh, I like that a lot. That we got kind of fucked on this. We thought that we, we found the golden goose by discovering the, the badge. But really... The game was rigged from the start. From the second we agreed to do this for her, we were indebted to her. Ooh. She fucking played us like a true blue ultra-liberal, huh? This was your plan all along. Oh, of course she'll deny it. Just like a true blue ultra-liberal. <laughs> she shakes her head vigorously. My plan is to share information. The only way to do that now is by telling my employers you've kept your end, which I hope you will. Because let me tell you, we are in dire waters. Half-Light, medium success. How bad can the info she has be? Ooh, gosh, so much stuff here. Scrolled so high. 
The sooner the probe is finished, the sooner I can share crucial information with you. She takes a sip of tea. Now, is there anything I can do for you in the meanwhile? Tea, perhaps? Hmm. Let's ask her if she knows about the tats. Show her the photo. That's the man who was killed. She almost takes the photo, but then stops. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. So she really recognized him, huh? Well, no, because we showed the hanging, but... I don't know, her reaction to it where she almost took the photo but then stopped made it seem like she knew this person. So you know something about the tattoos? Fine, let's return to it later. Why? How is you looking at the photo tied to the lynching? Hmm. I'm down for one or three. Let's go with this. Why? How is you looking at the photo tied to the lynching? Better not to tie the forestay to the backstay on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. Empathy. Medium success. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. Like a true blue ultra-liberal. <laughs> I spoke with the Loriman at the roundabout. Let's not do that because we didn't speak to all of them yet, right? By the way, I've talked to Everard Clare. You have. She smiles carefully. And how did you like Mr. Clare? Physical instrument, medium success. Finally, time to choose sides. I didn't. He's a beautiful man. Beautiful and just. Everard is a hero of the workers' movement. He is the champion I've sworn fealty to. He's a bloated rainbow socialist. I can do business with him. For a socialist, he's reasonable. He is not the champion I have chosen. I wish to swear fealty to you and the cause of capital. It's not important if I liked him. I was just doing my job. Hmm. <laughs> I'm down for saying he's a beautiful man, beautiful and just. Everett Clare is a hero of the workers' movement. He is the champion I've sworn fealty to. I'm down for either of those. Right, in light of us needing to choose a side, I will choose the Clare brothers, right? Hmm. But how do I want to go about it? Let's say he's beautiful. He's a beautiful man. Beautiful and just. Just? Hmm. In what way? In a funky socialist way. He looks out for the people. In a nice, crunchy, white, working class way, of course. Yeah, he's not actually just, is he? He's useless. I like how it still gives you a way, like, an out, right? It's very keen on continually giving you outs, right? Despite the fact that she just, like, rat fucked us into having to do this task for her, right? If we want the information. But oftentimes when you're about to commit to something, it'll give you an out, right? Like when we were about to commit to doing her shit, we were given multiple outs to opt into not doing it. All right. In a funky socialist way, he looks out for the people. Of course. Some of them, at least. The ones who work for him. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? No, wait, actually. <laughs> corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic, worm-like corruption reaching into the bowels of the earth. She looks at the ground and nods. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. <laughs> Of course, and I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt worm myself. She turns to you. However, if you felt like discussing something... <laughs> like the company secrets, isn't that, isn't that a little corrupt? That she would divulge the company secrets in exchange for a favor? The fact that she held up all the lorry men? Literally one of them is extremely lonely and misses his family and she had all that shit held up just so that way their big corporate business could get along doing their bullshit, right? Hmm. 
However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be, she smiles, gossiping. Electrochemistry medium success. Tell her. She'll like you for it. Well, I mean, Everett said that we should tell her everything, right? Horrific necktie. Yes, your disgusting tie agrees completely. Let's gossip. That money you gave me? Would that make things weird? If I shared information, I mean? Hmm. Mr. Everard is helping me find my gun. I helped him turn up the heat on the borscht. <laughs> I'd rather talk about something else for now, if you don't mind. Let's see. Let's say this. Mr. Everard is helping me find my gun. Oh. Her eyes become large and round. That's so helpful of him. The lieutenant looks at you, and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. Esprit de corps medium success. When I said be wacky, I didn't mean wildly, grossly irresponsible and damaging to the RCM. Unconventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. Then they go around and tell people about this to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. <laughs> incredible, she shakes her head. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? No. Mr. Everett says it's almost ready to be found soon. Mr. Everett is helping me find my gun. <laughs> we, we just reiterate. Hmm. Mr. Everett is helping me find my gun. Ah, yes. As Ah, yes. Ah, yes. As you said. She looks confused for a moment. Please don't get him in a loop. If he gets in a loop, it will last forever. Ask him to say something else, please. <laughs> Is this like almost on a meta level? Like sometimes when we get into a loop of just clicking the same shit to see if something will change for a bit? <laughs> of course. Thank you for the advice. I'm glad you were here to assist. She turns to you. Your other dealings with Everard are still of considerable interest to me. Esprit de corps of easy success. The lieutenant will be more lenient towards sharing those, hopefully. Okay. That money you gave me. Would that make things weird if I shared information, I mean? Weird? Oh, no. One of the positive things to come from the revolution is the unhindered exchange of information. You see, even when it comes to trade secrets. Which isn't to suggest our talks constitute corporate espionage. Even if they did, it would be fine. But they don't, since you logged the money as a donation. And this is clearly just gossip between friends. I helped him turn up the heat on the borscht. Did you now? She's intrigued, if a little confused. What sort of borscht is he making? Unimportant. The cook makes it to keep the strikers drunk. Helps them strike. Unimportant. You're right, detective. That whole undertaking was very unimportant. Why did we do it? An act born of sympathy for the working man. I set fire to the fumes of struggle. Honestly, that's really it. <laughs> I worship Al Ghul in many ways. <laughs> it's uninteresting. I thought it would make the broth taste better. No, I set fire to the fumes of struggle. Very curious. She blinks both eyes. A very curious thing to do. Truly. But that's how he operates. He just does things, ma'am. And then talks about them. Even if it's inappropriate. Empathy medium success. A, sta a strange equanimity has taken over, has overtaken the lieutenant. He's just going with the flow now. Easier that way. What else? I'd rather talk about something else for now, if you don't mind. Conclude. Of course, detective. She simmers down. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. 
Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Hmm, not at the time being, because we haven't spoke to the other Loriman. And we probably should, right? Because we know he, like, goes away for the evening at a certain point in time, right? There's also that old lady? Maybe we should talk to her? Remember her? The one that we were about to snap in front of. But Kim made us not do it. Hmm. Maybe we should snap. Should we do some snapping? Maybe. I mean, we're kind of a train wreck, so... I feel like snapping in someone's face like that in a very rude way isn't that bad, all things considered. I mean, we did drive the vehicle right into... <laughs> the... Sea? Yeah, the sea. Alright. Let's see. What's up, dude? Your name is Si Leng, right? Everything's still cool here, officer. The street vendor assures you. Hmm. Rhetoric too, right? Persuade him to give you money. So, Si Leng, what's your stance on drugs? Drugs? <laughs> for a moment, he's unsure how to respond. I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, <laughs> drugs are excellent. He kisses his fingers. Tasty, tasty drugs. I'm super into drugs. I actually don't like drugs. Proceed. We're looking for a lorry driver who is transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. <laughs> I'm super into drugs. <laughs> That's very cool. A lot of the coolest detectives do drugs. Sadly, I don't have any drugs on sale. Or at my home. Or on my person. He smiles. <laughs> Perception sight, medium success. Sir, it appears to be true. No drugs in sight. Not in the box of sunglasses or under the speakers. Proceed. We're looking for a lorry driver who's transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. That's even cooler. You investigating that and all? But, he points to the goods. I am not a lorry driver. I'm just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. But you are a lorryman. Another driver has identified you and your lorry. So you're not a lorry driver? I thought he was, honestly. Okay. And the racist one is the one who identified him, so I don't know. Take it with a grain of salt. Who said that? It's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me. Because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. So, you admit you're a lorry driver? No! I just said I work harder, and he's an asshole. I'm... He stops to think. Okay, maybe I'm a lorry driver too. <laughs> a little. But that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. He spreads his arms. So you forgot to tell me? So you were embarrassed to tell me. <laughs> I like how we just give him an out here with that. <laughs> Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Shi Lang, my source tells me you're the one transporting drugs for the Union. <laughs> Let's go with this. So you were embarrassed to tell me? No, I just forgot. It's such a small part of my life. It's in the rearview mirror now. I'm climbing out of that hole with ingenuity. Hmm. Let's see. Let's go with this. Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Nothing. I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know. The drug crowd. Half-Light, medium success. There's more here. He's afraid of this crowd, whoever they are. More than he is afraid of the racist lorry man. Who are you afraid of, Si Lang? You're wasting my time. Tell me who the fuck is transporting the drugs here. Okay, if you don't know, then I'll tell your employer you've been selling his stuff. Let's see if he'll just tell us. Who are you afraid of, Si Lang? Look! He looks around and lowers his voice. It's bad people doing bad things here. 
That's all I know. Please, don't get me into this mess. I spent 15 years working my way up to... My way up. If you don't want to get into this mess, raise your voice. You have to give us a reason to move on. <laughs> We're buddies, Shiling. Help us out. No one will know it was you. Let's go with that. Ooh. Huh. It's a she, okay? He whispers. The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her. He shakes his head. She's no lady. Who are these other drivers who talk? Is the lady driver the old woman back there? Point to the pale driver. Dazed out? Strange? I don't know. Maybe? If she is, I haven't gone near her. I don't get involved, I told you. Inland Empire, medium success. It could be. She was strange. Who are these other drivers who talk? All of them, I don't know. I told you I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist? Or the other one with the tattoos? He points north. All of them. Even the ones who were left. I don't hang with them anymore. I don't hang with them. I don't remember who has tattoos. Okay, we're cool now. All right. He snaps back to his usual self. Ice cold. Let's cap this off by a purchase. You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses detectives, both of you. You deserve it. Huh. <laughs> Persuade him to give you some money. We can try again. <laughs> Plus one because he ratted out the lady driver. Fuck it, let's try it. I don't think we'll succeed, but we may as well try. Yep. Rhetoric challenging failure. No need to dress this one up. Okay. I want money. <laughs> we'll just go through the same things when we failed last time. Okay. I'll leave you to it for now. Okay. Let's see. Should we go talk to the lady or should we talk to Tommy? Tommy Lehom. Maybe Tommy will have some insight on who it may be. Because I don't want to bother the old lady if it's not her. Right? Especially when the lieutenant didn't want me to. Let's see here. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? I heard that one of the drivers is a woman, but I don't think she's here. Do you know this lady driver? He shifts around, suddenly uncomfortable, then looks away. I don't want to talk about that. Why? Do you know something? What is it? I don't mean to pry, but I need your help. She may be involved with the drug business. Okay, let's change the subject. Hmm. Let's say this. I don't mean to pry, but I need your help. She may be involved with the drug business. Man, I was hoping it wasn't going to be her. He bites his lip. All I can say is, she isn't around here anymore. She isn't some evil drug trafficker, and I don't know where she is. I asked you who's conducting the drug trade. You said you didn't know. Now you're saying you do? Who is this person? What's her name? Who is she to you? What does she look like? Hmm, it seems like we can exhaust all of this. I don't want to say this because all this is, is antagonizing him here at one, right? Now you're saying you do? I feel like that gets us nowhere. Who is this person? What's her name? Thank God I don't know. People here call her the lady driver. She kept her name a secret from me too. Now... I see why. Who is she to you? A friend? An acquaintance. I don't know. She was the only person in this damn jam I could talk to. She's someone I don't want to rat out to the law, okay? What does she look like? A youngish woman. Gruff, but in a cool way. What color hair? Blue and violet. Dyed. He answers reluctantly. It was violent when she got here. Blue before she went. Okay, so someone who's keen on dyeing their hair cool colors, or at least just dyeing their hair. When did she leave? 
Damn, I don't wanna... He looks you straight in the eye. Please, just let it go. Whatever she did, it can't be that bad. She's not a bad person, I know that much. We can't just let it go. It's part of a police investigation. I'm gonna try and let it go, though. I don't know. For some reason, I'm... I'm down with Tommy Laham, right? That's how it always is with you, isn't it? All part of the investigation. He shakes his head. The girl's... troubled. If you hunt her down, she may not survive it. I can't have that on my conscience. It won't come to that. We won't pursue her on this. This is information only. I don't believe you. Believe us, it really is. I just can't, man. I'm not naive. You said she's troubled. How? She's got the darkness in her. That young person's darkness when you think it's all over and you're looking for a way out. She shared this with you. Yes, which is why I don't want to snitch on her. It's not snitching, it's just a few questions. Come on, man, life is just a joke. I was told everyone's afraid of her. You're not? Hmm. It's not snitching, it's just a few questions. Let's go with this. I was told everyone's afraid of her. You're not? I heard the rumors. I saw the other drivers looking at me strange when we talked. And she told me, too, that she's had a violent life. But I wasn't afraid of her. More like for her. Did this violent life include drug trafficking? Well, he sighs. It looks like it did now, but we didn't talk about that. We talked about life, you know? She talked about her mind. Hold on, her mind? The way it worked. The trouble it was given her. Pain threshold medium success. The pain it was causing her. When she left, did she leave her lorry behind? Fuck, man. Go grill someone else with these questions, okay? There are plenty of drivers here who couldn't stand her, or were afraid of her. They'd be more than happy to rat her out. Empathy, easy success. Push Tommy, and it will break his heart. And his spirit. Don't expect you to be pals. Physical instrument, medium success. Now is not a time to focus on feelings. You need that info, son. Put yourself in my shoes. I need this for another investigation, too. It's important. I can't blow it. She's a suspect. I need you to tell me where she is, or I can't finish the investigation. Force Tommy. Fine. I will drop the matter for now. Find another way. Yeah, we'll drop it. I like Tommy. And honestly, it sounds like I would like her. Thank you, friend. He sighs. It's a big sigh of relief. Wow, this makes me feel like I should pick up smoking again. Would help with my rhymes, too. Alright, that's all for now. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. The Jam Mystery. Find out who's the lady driver and where's her lorry. Okay. Let's see. Let's go on up over here. Should we talk to the racist lorry driver? Maybe he knows something. Right? Looking for something, aunt? Huh? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? I know you've been giving me the runaround. Fess up. Where's the lady driver? He smirks. I don't know what you're talking about. First, you knew Shi Lang didn't do it. Then, why are you smirking? Just tell me which one's her lorry. Oh, alright then. First, you knew Shi Lang didn't do it. He did something. He stole his employer's goods and another lorry man's job. You should be thankful for the tip. He grins, a wide smile. Just tell me which one's her lorry. Listen up, fuckwits. You don't scare me. <laughs> the cops don't run Ravishol West. You don't run Martinez. You don't run anything. 
So who does? You? So who does? The lady driver? Actually, we do. Just tell me who the damn lady driver is. So who does the lady driver? No. The lieutenant turns to the lorry man. He means La Puta Madre. Inland Empire medium success. The name resounds like a bell in the air. A dark gong. You get a bad feeling about it. Esprit de corps medium success. Looks like the lieutenant has a plan. Let him do this. <laughs> For a moment, the lorryman is silent. Then he spits on the pavement. Yeah, him. Cross your arms and nod. Who's Laputa? <laughs> what are you doing, Kim? Let me handle it. Hmm. Let's, let's play along with the lieutenant here. Cross your arms and nod. Then I presume you're familiar with his peons. Yeah, he says, unsure whether where this is leading. They're his little bitches. He's got them all over the unions. Not just the unions. He has peons everywhere. Some say he even has them in the RCM. He gets closer to him. Dirty fucking peons who do anything for him. Multi-ethnic drug addicts. Say nothing. Wait, are we? <laughs> Say nothing. You're not peons, he says. You wouldn't be investigating a drug thing if you were. No, of course not. We're not peons. But if we were, and one of Madre's drivers were to be stealing from him, then it's a good peon's job to find out who that is. It's not a hard job. It won't take a long time. It won't make Padre Madre angry. He looks at him. But a stupid fucking racist is standing in the way, protecting this fucking thief. His eyes dart between you and the lieutenant. I am not scared of you or the mob. I am under the protection of the Loryman and Carter's Guild. You've seen that corpse? In the ceramic armor there. The lieutenant points to the yard. Did his shitty little guild protect him? Nah, you wouldn't just leave him out there if you... He tries to light a fresh cigarette, but his hands are shaking now. The sentence simply ends. I love this. <laughs> I love that the lieutenant is totally playing... <laughs> again, playing his like, racist shit against him in a very real way. The lieutenant turns and gives you a barely perceptible nod. Esprit de corps medium success. I've softened him up as best as I could. Now it's on you to finish the job. Oh shit. Half-Light. Legendary. 14. Make him tell you what he knows. Ooh, fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> Should we back out and buff up our Half-Light? Because we can. Okay. I think we, we buff up our half-light and then do it. We're done for now. And then, let's buff it up, right? Because we can get a little bit more, can't we? Yeah, with this, well, no, that reduces it. I believe we have something that gives us more half-light. Conceptualization, electrochem. Shit, maybe we don't. Maybe we're already wearing it. Yeah, the Ultra Series gloves. Okay, fuck me. Hmm. We could take some shit here, though. Right? We could take some alcohol. Maybe we do that. Right? Let's fucking do it. Alright. There we go. Looking for something, Aunt? Huh? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? There we are, and let's drink this. Physique raised. 72% chance. Oh shit. Okay, oh, it just scrolled up because we consume the alcohol. Gotcha. Okay. Half-Light Legendary 14. Make him tell you what he knows. Fuck, we failed it! Oh my god! <laughs> Shit me! Half-Light Legendary Failure. 
The main thing is to not overdo it, even when you're trying to scare someone. The most important thing is, how does it look on your resume? The jig's up. I've got the goods on you. Why don't you and me step outside for a little talk? Look, I'm sorry. Can you just tell me what you know? <laughs> I mean, we failed this anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you and me step outside for a little talk? Ooh, damage my morale. What? The lorry man erupts in contemptuous laughter. <laughs> what do you think we're doing right now, Runt? We are outside, talking. Damn it, I meant... Do you want to find someplace private to... No, shit. <laughs> the lorry man raises an eyebrow. These some kind of homo thing? No, no, of course not. Just tell me what you know. I don't really know where that came from. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is? <laughs> okay, that's enough, detective. That's enough. Oh, look, we got our, our thing there. Let's just go at and ask Tommy, all right? We're wasting our time here. Shit. I'm not going to ask Tommy. I'm going to fuck over this guy, even if I have to put a point into Half-Light. Okay, we're done here for now. Let's see, what did we get with this? Thought view er, thought complete remote viewers division. It is done. You've broken loose from the confines of modern science and into the vault of extrasensory knowledge from exotic cultures. Mankind has always searched for a means to break the shackles, restraining the mind. Some practice meditation, some take like a ton of DMT. You apparently only need to rub your temples, and bam, the Aether opens before you, pressing its dark secrets, entities in the void making contact. Definitely not because you're rubbing your temples and talking to yourself. Difficult, minus one difficulty to all psyche passives. Holy shit. All of them? Wow. Even shit like Esprit de Corps and Authority. Huh. Okay. Minus one, drama. Gullible hack. I'm fine with that. Okay, rad. Well, let's pop a point here. Look, we got three of them banked. Now's the time for it, because I'm not going to be mean to Tommy. Alright, here we go. Level up. Boom. Looking right. for something, Aunt? Huh? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? Yeah, maybe. 83%. <laughs> Shit. And also, we were penalized for telling him to go fuck himself, right? Okay. Make him tell you what he knows. Oh, thank goodness. Half-Light. Legendary success. Men like this only respect two things. Strength and fear. Physical instrument, medium success. Time to turn up the volume. Show me her lorry right fucking now. The lady driver's lorry. Where is it? Ooh, shit. Look at this go. Fuck you. I told you I'm not gonna... There. His voice grows smaller as yours. I'm gonna fuck you for the rest of my life, you understand? I'm gonna put you in a cell with a giant kipped. You're gonna be bleeding kipped dick, you hear me? I've been to your fucking lorry. I know where it is. Point to it. I'm gonna burn it down, you hear me? What's your name, fuckhead? I'm gonna go on police radio saying this guy told Madre to fuck off. Oh shit. I feel like the last one might be most effective. Because that seemed to... Like, that plays off of what the lieutenant was doing, right? What's your name, fuckhead? Look, fuck you, man! He tries to wave you off. Eat some lorry driver down there. Green banged up thing. I don't fucking know who she is. When did she go away? I don't know. I don't even know her name. She just rolls with the fleet and acts like a big shot. Some dyke, probably. I haven't even seen her for days. Where exactly is her lorry? Pest the monument down there. He waves south. 
the Green Temple. Now, leave me the fuck alone, okay? Unsurprisingly, he is not only racist, but, you know, <laughs> he seems to only have respect for, you know, the old cishat crew. Okay, continue. A small tempo by the monument, green. He turns to you. Let's get into that lorry. Empathy, easy success. Looks like you got his adrenaline up too. <laughs> got a smoke? No, right, I'm going. Let's see here. Let's swap this out. Get our trash bag back. Beautiful. Okay. Let's see. Search through the lady driver's lorry cabin near the monument. Okay. And he said it was a green one, right? Going over here. We can't rat her out, though. Right? I really do not want to do that. Stop. Between those trucks down there. Smokes. Go get them. Between those trucks down there? Oh, look. Wow. <laughs> it's because we drank the booze, right? Our, um, our electrochemistry is just high enough to where we were able to, like, our, our drug dar has gone off. Wow. Smokes. Astra. Plus one int, minus one health. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Dope. Let's see. What does it say about him? These grod-made cigarettes are remarkable for their high tar content. A favorite of fishermen police officers, and working men the world over. All right. Let's do a quick save here. So by the monument here. Is this it right here? Right by the, the pale driver? Or maybe this one. Ooh, it's this one. Okay. Let's do a quick save again. Let's see. What's inside? This green fallen A to Z, contemporane, is parked in the shadow of the ruins, looming overhead. It's seen better days. This must be the one he told us about, unless he was lying. The lieutenant peeks inside. Try to peek in the window. Try the door handle. How are we going to open this? Open it. Get this open, Kim. Try to peek in the window. The glass on the side windows is tinted and covered with dust. You can barely make out the shape of a seat and two steering levers. Inland Empire medium success. It feels like you're peeking into someone's home residence. Inside, it's private, cozy, warm. Dusty, too. Try the door handle. The door is locked. The handle looks shiny, like it's recently replaced. How are we going to get this open, Kim? Use the pry bar to smash the window. Open it from the inside. Really? This has been hard enough. No need to make it any harder. Holy shit. Are we really gonna do that? Oh, weird. I got, Because I have plus one because of the icosahedral red dye. Plus one because I lifted weights as well. Holy shit. That gave us a bonus? Oh, that's wild. I wonder if plus one from lifting weights gives us a bonus to all of our physical instrument checks huh that's wild okay shit do i really want to smash the window good god all right fuck do i really want to do this this seems terrible here let's let's fucking do it why not leave all right there we go. Let's see. Well, surely, maybe if we talk to someone, they'll have a way into it? I don't know. Maybe we could find the person themselves, rather than smash into their shit. Like, this can't be them, right? No. Yeah, look at her hair. Okay. Nothing to do here. Shit. What color hair did Cindy have? I don't know. I can't even remember. Hmm. 
Should we go over and look at Cindy? Or we could look through the rest of the apartments. I really don't want to smash into their fucking window like that. Right? Because that makes it very difficult for us to not snitch on them. Right? Maybe if we talk to Tommy again? Let's see. Probably nothing, but let's give it a shot. There we are. And let's see. Tommy, anything? Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? All right, that's all for now. Shit. Okay, is Cindy still out? Because we could go check in with her. What if it's the working class woman? Doesn't she wear a hat? Let's see. No, she has her hair in a bun. Okay, that's all for the moment. I'll let you read. I mean, there is, a, there is a chance that whoever the lady driver is undyed their hair. But it seems unlikely because Tommy said that she had her hair dyed um, twice, two different colors. So it seems more likely that the lady driver would re-dye the hair, right? Let's see, who is this? Cindy, what color is your hair? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Oh, we can talk to her about the room. Okay, it's definitely not her. She has, like, dark hair. Is that bed in the coal room yours? Oh. Not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. <laughs> Perception sight, medium success. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. Really? You're a miner? Don't you have a real home? It's not the nicest place, but I guess it'll have to do. Cool, I have other questions. Really? You're a miner? Yes. I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me, but somehow it never happens. Really? You're kidding. Don't you have a real home? Does anyone in a city like this? She replies wistfully, looking around. Empathy medium success. If there's pain about any particular home she's lost, she's buried it deep fortified herself against it. It's not the nicest place, but I guess it'll have to do. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. She looks at the paint dripping down the wall. Like me, right now. I'm doing nothing at all. Cool, I have other questions. Shoot, Piggy. It's what you do, isn't it? I found some drugs in the coal room. Yours? They just might be. Rough stuff. If you take the ride, you'd be wise to buckle your little pig belly up. I like bumpy rides. Know where I can get more. Ooh, shit. I'm gonna have to take you in, kid, for a possession of drugs. Know where I can get more? We apologize, but we're currently not buying the entrapment you're selling. Please call again later. Thank you. She smiles at her own joke, then whispers, if you're really interested, then I'm sorry, but I don't do anti-radiation drugs anymore, so I don't know where to get them. Where did you get these, then? 5 XP. From a guy on Boogie Street, Porta Rossa. Go there, after midnight, and you can get all kinds of funny things. Veterans of the People's Pile selling their stash. Empathy, easy success. Damn me and my affinity to farm animals, she's probably thinking. She hopes the information is useless. Okay, catch you later, Cindy. Huh. That might actually be the lead that we need, right? If we talk to this dude at midnight, we, that could be a lead to the lady driver, right? Because if this guy is selling... Dr well, selling his stash, but for how long? If it's been years, maybe he's getting more supply from the lady driver, right? And then we can use him to find the lady driver without busting into her shit. I really don't want to bust into her shit, <laughs> is what I'm getting at. That's something I really don't want to do. Alright. Let's go on over here. Like, I'm more keen to leave that dude's door cracked open as a message than I am to bust open her lorry. Right? Okay. Let's go on over here. Hmm. Let's see. Where should we go? Up here? 
Is this Boogie Street? Is that what this is by the fisherman shacks? Maybe. Maybe we'll run into this um, blue or violet haired lady driver up here. Like inside of this building. Have we been in this one? I don't know that we have. Double click to run. Press space. Oh, this is the one with the creepy chair. Right? Oh, I think it is. It is. Okay. Let's do a quick save here. Get on out. Good. All right. Hmm. Let's go up over here. Look. Some investigatables. A yellow thought. Sounds of life in the north. A washboard scrums filth from fabric. Ooh, is that what that weird noise is? That thrumming? Oh, hey. Yeah, there's people here. Look at them. What's this? Ooh, a skill point. Cinder blocks charred. A makeshift fire pit with magazines for lighting. Cool. Got another level up banked. All right. A bench. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. The lieutenant looks down the street. We can't sit on benches. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. Oh, is this for hobo copping? Maybe. Look, there's some blue item in there. The bushes are too thick and thorny to pass through. Abby! Don't call Abigail! Ooh, maybe that's someone that we're looking for. That's just life, friend, they say. Oh shit, we have to go around the long way to access that. Okay, then let's go inside here and fuck with this stuff real quick. Torn up window. You see dust-covered linens, dried tulips on a bed. Huh. Oh, some pants are in here. Huh. Enter isolary trousers plus one to kingdom of conscience what what is that oh these are moralist pants huh plus one to kingdom of conscience moralist pants tailored trousers in light brown moderate in every aspect they're absolutely unremarkable in other words perfect <laughs> okay. What is our current score for moralism? I think probably either one or nothing. Let's see, how do I even check? Yeah, one. Okay. Let's see here. Anything else of interest that has changed on our stats here? Nah, doesn't seem like it. Alright. Weird. Why would we want pants to look like a moralist? Interesting. I don't know. Is it like some sort of disguise, perhaps? I have no clue. All right. Well, nonetheless, I suppose when next we come back, we'll continue looking around here. We're going to hold off on bashing in that Lori's window for as long as we possibly can, right? We may have to do it at some point, but I'm going to keep holding off on doing it until it's like, I don't know, potentially one of the last things that we do, because I really don't want to. All right. Until next time, please take care of each other.